Hi, and welcome to another Tech Tip video for ANSYS Mechanical. For this video, I'm going to be going over some recommendation and tips on setting up a line body bolt pretensioning. In my last video, I went over how to set up a line body bolt pretension with a, an extraction method and with a beam method. For this video, I'm going to be going over how things can be done incorrectly and how we can avoid those. So, from left to right, I have a solid body representing a simplified bolt assembly. The next assembly is a line body as well as the middle assembly. And I have the same setup for a beam line body. So there's a difference between the setup between this member and this member. There's a setup difference between this member and the last member. I'm going to do a section view so we can take a look at that difference. And I'm going to go over why they're different and how we can uh, manipulate those settings. Let's take a look at the stress results from this bolt pretension. I'm going to take a look at stress results without the solid body set up over here. The solid body is the most ideal. It's going to be the most accurate. It's going to uh, sh represent all of the elements inside of the solid body and what's what happens when you apply a bolt pretension to it. And this is the one that we want to replicate. As we move over to the next body, you can see that the first line body that we set up seems to be very similar, if not almost the same, as our solid body. But when we go over to the next line body, it's not quite like that at all. Let me make this undeformed, or let's just go to a true scale. You can see that the stress results are different. And why is that? Let's get those the hardware back in there. Now let's exaggerate that deformation. And you can see that there's a stress cone in the first line body. A stress cone meaning that it lean, the stress linearly grows from the center of the washer outward. That stress cone is also existent in our solid body. We want to replicate this stress cone in our line body results. When we go over to the next body, the next line body does not have a stress cone at all. I'm going to show you where things went wrong. And it's in the contacts. So when I set up these contacts, or rather joints, when I set up these fixed joints for this analysis, let me turn off this section view over here. You can see in the first fixed joint, I went over and changed the contact properties, or rather the joint properties, over to deformable. I also applied a pinball region of 0 0.375. What that is replicating over here is uh, the vertex of this line body is connecting only to a pinball the size I type that lets me replicate the bolt and the nut. So over here we have a bolt head that has a radius of 0 0.375. And I've replicated that connection over here with this pinball setting. If I go over to the solution information and then we click on geometry, we can actually see those connections. you can see that all the nodes 
on this surface are being connected to that center vertex of that line body. So that is where our bolt pretension surface is being applied to on the washer side. Same for all the other bodies. But by not setting the behavior as deformable over here, let's go over to this side where the washer didn't seem to have that stress cone. Without having, without, with setting a rigid type, you're not allowing that surface to deform like a stress cone. You're pretty much applying an even stress and not allowing these nodes and elements to have any deformability. Therefore, you're missing your stress cone. So, once again, we can avoid this by applying a deformable behavior. And that's going to more closely replicate a solid body. The same can be done over here on the other two line body types where we use beams. You're going to have the option of changing the behavior to deformable. And you also want to, again, set that pinball region to represent where you're going to be applying your pressure from your bolt pretension. A pinball region is important because we want to replicate the bolt head. If you do not set a pinball region, then it's going to connect the whole entire surface of this washer to the end of this beam element or beam body. Same over here. If we do not apply this pinball region, I'm going to show you what happens if I hit zero and I allow it to connect to the whole washer surface. Let's solve. And with the solver being completed, we can take a look at the stress and see that there is no stress cone where I deactivated the pinball region. That's because you can see that the connections is being applied to the entire washer surface. So it's a good idea to apply that pinball region so we can have that stress cone. And if you're up for it, you can also apply a split on this surface to represent the bolt head and the same on the bottom. If we wanted to, we could actually apply a split on the surface of this washer to represent the nut. But the reason why I prefer not to is because I can get a more conformal mesh by not having a split surface. I get a better element quality this way. You just have to ask yourself what's important. As my last recommendation, if you have an assembly full of hardware and you find a region that's very important for you to get a lot of accuracy on for a line body, I recommend replacing that line body with solid bodies. That way you get a more accurate analysis. So try to start your large assemblies by using some line bodies to lower computation time. Find where there's high stresses or where your bolt pretensioning is being undone. And then model your solid bodies in those regions and redo your analysis. It could be a good way of speeding up your analysis.